and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be filming something I've been wanting to film for a really long time now, but I've just been putting it off. So I'm finally biting the bullet and we're going to do it. So I am going to dust off my Centro knitting machine today and I am going to attempt to make a jumper. Now, I have tried this once before and I wasn't happy with the results. So this is take two. I'm not going to call this a tutorial purely because I am just winging it. I don't exactly know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just playing it by ear and seeing how it goes. But I thought it could be fun to take you guys along on the journey and show you the process. And then at the end, we'll see if it's worked out or not. The yarn I'm using today is the Venture Yarn from Lingcraft. This is the colorway yellow. Now, I'm pretty sure this is an eight ply yarn. Um, but it's kind of on the thicker side of an 8-ply, so we'll see how it goes. I haven't actually tried it in the knitting machine yet, so today's video is just one big experiment. Um, but this yarn is absolutely beautiful. It's got the most beautiful variegation, so I thought it would probably knit up really, really nicely on the knitting machine, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know how many skeins I'm going to need exactly, but of course, throughout the video, I'll let you guys know exactly how much yarn I've used um, how many rows I'm completing and how I'm constructing my jumper. I'll show you guys the whole process. Now to kind of plan what I'm going to do, I've drawn up a little diagram. Oh, that's really hard to see because the light's like reflecting in there. But basically what we're gonna be doing is two tubes for the sleeves. So here and here, and then we're gonna create four panels. So two at the front and two at the back. So there will be a seam going down the middle of the jumper. The last time I tried to make a jumper on the knitting machine, I did do the seams going across ways and it just looked funny. The seam ended up sitting like right across my nipples. It was weird. Anyway, so we're not gonna be doing that today. We're gonna to do the seams going down the front. Now the reason there's gonna be seams going down and the reason I'm doing this in panels is because it will give you guys the ability to customize the size based on what size you wanna make. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so to get started, I am going to be first working on the four panels that are going to be for the body. Now, I will be using the waste yarn method for this jumper. If you don't want to use waste yarn, that's totally fine. But I just prefer to use waste yarn purely because it just gives you a much nicer finish when you cast off. So all I'm going to be doing now is casting on with my waste yarn. And for the panels, I'm actually going to be using the entirety of the machine, even though I am going to be knitting in a panel. Now, the reason for this is because I don't actually know the exact measurements of the panel once it will come off the machine. I know this does look really, really big, um, especially because I'm gonna be doing two, so well, four technically, but two for the front and two for the back, so your jumper will be double the width of this. But the reason I'm gonna be doing the whole width of the machine is purely because it does condense quite a lot when you take it off the machine. So I just wanna make sure that I give myself plenty of room and if it ends up being way too big, then so be it. I love an oversized jumper anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. But I will give you guys the exact measurements and how everything turned out throughout the video as we cast off and as we go along. I'm gonna go ahead now and cast on with some waste yarn. I usually like to do about 10 or so rows. And obviously you just wanna be using a contrasting color to the yarn that you're gonna be using for your jumper. If you're not familiar with the panel knitting method on your knitting machine, there is a video on my channel I do recommend going and watching that first and you can learn how to knit a panel and then come back to this video. Okay, so once you've completed about 10 rows of waste yarn, you can then remove your waste yarn from the yarn guide. I'm going to cut mine because I'm going to use this at the end and on the other panels. So I will need that detached from my work. You can then just place the end in the middle there you're then going to take the yarn that you're using for your jumper and we are going to start working with this. Now I just want to mention that on the Centro, I don't know if other knitting machines are different, but on the Centro, the row counter actually doesn't work when you are using the panel knitting method. So what I'm going to do is use a counter that I've downloaded on my phone and it looks something like this. Sorry, the light's reflecting in there, but it looks like this. And then all you do is tap it 
whoops, I've just typed it twice, but you get the point. You just tap it to count the rows. So you can just manually do it that way. Um, obviously that's not ideal, but that's just what I'm going to have to do because otherwise I won't know how big to make my panels and I need to somehow keep track of how many rows I'm doing. I'm going to take my yarn that I'm using for my jumper and we are going to start cranking. Wish me luck. <laughs> So here I have finished my first panel for the body. I completed 85 rows. Fingers crossed it is long enough. I like kind of a cropped jumper, so you would obviously just continue if you wanted it to be longer. But I'm going to finish here at 85 rows. I'm now going to take my waist yarn and I'm going to do again, whoops, again about 10 rows of waist yarn and then I will take it off my machine and we'll have a look and see exactly what it looks like. Now to kind of estimate how long I wanted this panel to be, I measured from my collarbone down to where I want the jumper to finish. So if you're, you know, trying to get rough measurements um, for your front or back panels, I do recommend just measuring from about your collarbone or you know the top of your shoulder to where you want your jumper to finish and then kind of try and measure it while it's on the machine. So I've just kind of been trying to measure it while it's on the machine. It is kind of difficult but you know as long as it's roughly around the length that you want it should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead now do a few rows of waist yarn and then we'll take it off the machine and have a look. Okay, so I have finished with my waist yarn. So I'm just going to take that out of the yarn guide. And now all I'm going to do is just crank to take this off the machine and we'll have a look at how it has turned out. Fingers crossed. Alrighty, how are we looking? Now, another thing you want to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out your measurements is that once you do take it off the machine and give it a little bit of a stretch, it will get a little bit longer. So just keep that in mind when you are trying to figure out your measurements. Now, obviously, being the stockinette stitch, it is going to curl at the sides, but this is where we're going to join it to the other panel. So that won't be a problem once it's finished. Before I move on, I just wanted to give you guys the exact measurements of this panel. So I used the entirety of my machine. I have a 48 peg Centro machine. So these are the measurements for a 48 pin machine. If you had a smaller machine, you can absolutely still make a jumper using this technique, but you will just have smaller panels, which means you will need to make more. Um, so the measurements of this is about 18 and a half inches by about 12 and a half inches when it's not rolled up. So obviously my jumper will be double the width of that. If you wanted to make your jumper bigger, then you would need to make more panels to make it wider. Um, the length obviously just depends on how many rows you complete on your machine. So if you want to make it longer, you would just crank for longer and do extra rows. If you wanted to make it wider, you would need to create more panels. Now I would also recommend leaving a long tail at both ends of your work so we can use that to seam down the sides. This was my first panel and I didn't leave a long tail, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. I can just join some yarn in. But for the remainder of my panels, I will be sure to leave a long tail at both ends so then I can use that to seam our panels together. I'll flip the camera around for you guys and I will just measure it up against my body and we'll see if the length is okay. okay. So like I said, I measured from about my collarbone to where I want the jumper to finish and this has pretty much turned out pretty much spot on. So what you want to do now is go ahead and make three more of these panels exactly the same. Good luck. Um, I will go ahead now and make three more of these and I will come back to you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, I have completed all four panels. Now what you're going to want to do is pair them together. If you're using a variegated yarn like me, you may have a preference um, over which ones are paired together. But if you're using the same color yarn, then obviously this won't matter. But I'm going to pair mine up in the way that it looks like. It's 
purposely unmatched if that makes sense because obviously being the variegated yarn the stripes aren't going to match up perfectly so rather than trying to match them up as close as possible I'm going to go for the look where they are purposely not matched together I think that gives a little bit of character you know so anyway I'm just going to have a play around here so maybe do these two together like that and then I might have these two together like that something along those lines now once you've paired them up and you've decided which ones you want to be next to each other we need to seam them down the middle now we're going to leave the waste yarn on for now while we do all the seaming and then I'll show you guys how to finish off your edging later but all we're going to be focusing on now is the seaming down the middle now you can either use a darning needle or like a yarn needle to seam them together my preferred method is to use a crochet hook that's what I'm going to be doing today but the choice is absolutely up to you if you don't know how to use a crochet hook then by all means please just use a needle with a matching color yarn okay so I'm just going to put two of the panels to the side because we won't need them at the moment we're just going to be working on these two for now and you want to lay them on top of each other so the right sides are facing each other so just on top of each other like that now what you want to do is find one of those long ends that you left that I spoke about before and this is what we're going to use to seam our pieces together so just move any other ends out of the way as best you can okay so like I said I am using a crochet hook to seam my panels together but you can absolutely use a darning needle if you need to now we're not going to be joining the waste yarn because we are going to be removing this later on so don't worry about seaming the waste yarns together we just want to start from this section where our actual panels start so taking your needle or crochet hook we're just going to go in under that first stitch that we can see there. And then again in through the other edge there. So you should have something that looks a little bit like that on your hook or on your needle. If you're using a needle, you can then just seam all the way down the edge. But because I'm using a crochet hook, I'm going to use slip stitching to join my panels together. So going in with a slip stitch. And basically just going in through each row and slip stitching to join. like that so that's what it should start to look like and we're just going to continue that down the whole length of the panel remembering to stop before you get to your waist yarn because we don't want to join the waist yarn together because that's going to make it really hard for us to remove later on so stop once you get to the end of your jumper color okay so I've just finished seaming all the way down my edge and now I'm at the end so remember how I said to stop just before you get to the waist yarn which I have so you can see that the waist yarn is not seamed together that's what we want once you've gotten all the way to the end you can cut your yarn leaving a decent amount of tail so you can sew it in later about six inches or so and then you can fasten that one off And if I flip this over to the right side, you'll see that we have a beautiful, neat, tidy seam. 
I should have mentioned that the front and back of this jumper will be exactly the same. So there is really no front and back. You can wear it whichever way you like. So you could do the front two panels one color and the back two panels another color and then it's kind of like you've got a two in one jumper. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would mention that, that the front and back will be exactly the same. So don't stress too much about what's the front and what's the back. What I'm gonna do now is grab my other two panels and complete this exact same process and then I will meet you back here. Okay, so once you have seamed your two two lots of panels together you should have two big panels that look like this and now what we're going to do is using that exact same method we're going to place our panels right sides together and then at the top here this is going to be our shoulder section so our head hole will be about here obviously in the middle of our jumper and then our shoulders are going to be here at the sides. So what we want to do is seam these sections here, leaving a hole for the head. So we want to seam from the outside in until we get to where we want our head hole to be. Now the size of the head hole will purely be up to your preference. I will let you know how big mine is once I have seamed the shoulders together because to be honest, I'm not really sure exactly how big I want it to be. I mean, I just want it to be an average sized head hole, but if you wanted it to be like an off the shoulder jumper or something like that, then of course you could make it bigger. But I'm just going for a standard style jumper today. So my head hole will probably be about, let's see. I'm going to say maybe eight inches wide. So what I would recommend doing is grabbing a couple of stitch markers like I've got here and using your tape measure, you want to measure from the center seam down and mark out where you want your head hole to start. So like I said before, I'm going for about an eight inch head hole. So I've got four inches there and then I'll go over to this side and mark another four inches. Now to make sure you've got it exactly symmetrical, you can always count the stitches from the center seam out and that way you'll know that you've got the same distance on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and count my stitches. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stitches on this side and then on this side I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I was one stitch off. I was pretty close. But as you can see, that's just a way of making sure that you're exactly symmetrical on both sides. And then what I would do is flip your panels over and do that exact same process on this side. The only difference is I would use this stitch marker to join the two panels together. So counting 13 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm then gonna take my stitch marker and just poke that through there and do it up. So now the two panels are joined together and then I'm gonna do the exact same on this side. So now I know that it's exactly symmetrical and it's even on both sides. Okay, so now what you wanna do is take either your needle or your crochet hook, whatever you're using to seam your panels together and we are going to now seam the shoulder sections. So if you have a long end that you can work with that was left, then by all means, please use that. If not, you may have to join in some yarn. I've got a long end here that I can use on this side. So I will use this side as the example for you guys. Okay, so the great thing about the waist yarn is you can clearly see the stitches that we want to be seaming our panels through. If you flip your waist yarn to the inside of your two panels, so just kind of tuck it under like that, so you can easily see the stitches here that we want to work with. 
and then do the exact same on the other side but flip it in so we can see our stitches just here you then want to take your needle or your crochet hook and go in under that very first stitch let me zoom in for you guys so you want to find that very first stitch and poke your crochet hook or needle in under that first stitch on both sides. Now I cannot stress the importance of picking up every single stitch. If you miss a stitch, your work will unravel. I cannot stress how important it is to make sure you are picking up every single stitch. If you have to go and count them, please do so. But please, please, please just be really careful. Take your time and make sure you are going in and picking up every stitch because the last thing I want is for you to go to all this trouble and then your work starts unraveling. So please make sure you go in and pick up every single stitch. Now, you may have ends floating around from your waist yarn. Don't worry too much about that. Just put them to the side for now. We will deal with those later. So now you just want to be going in and securing every single stitch up until you get to your stitch marker because obviously we want to stop there so we can leave our head hole. So once you get to your stitch marker, please stop. But up until then, you want to go into every single stitch and secure it using either your crochet hook or your needle. Again, just being really, really careful and making sure you pick up every single stitch. Okay, so I've finished seaming my first shoulder. This is what it should look like. And if I just flip it over, you'll see that you can still see the waist yarn on the inside. Please do not remove your waist yarn yet because we haven't secured the stitches for our neck hole. So just keep that in mind. Do not remove your waist yarn yet until we have secured all the stitches for our neck or head hole, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now what you want to do is move across to the next shoulder and repeat that exact same process, securing all those stitches all the way up until your stitch marker. I'm okay, so I have now seamed both shoulders. Now what I'm going to do is secure the stitches around the neck. So I'm just going to take some fresh yarn and I'm going to join this in because I don't think the tails I have here will be long enough to do the entire neck. So I'm just going to take some new yarn with my crochet hook and exactly like what we did for the shoulder, I'm going to go in and secure all these stitches. The only difference is instead of seaming the two sides together, we're just going to be doing each side separately. So the only purpose of this is to secure those live stitches. So once we remove our waist yarn, your work isn't going to unravel. So I'm actually going to flip it over because it's easier for you guys to see the purple waist yarn rather than the green. So you'll see here that that's the last stitch we secured for our shoulder section. Now I'm actually going to attach this yarn into those stitches where we finished seaming our shoulder. So just with a slip stitch if you're using a crochet hook. Otherwise you can of course go in with your needle instead. So going in to the last stitches of your shoulder seam and now all I'm going to do is find that very next stitch which is there. Again being really really careful that you go in and pick up every single stitch because if you don't your work is going to unravel. I cannot stress this enough. So finding that next stitch, popping my crochet hook through there or if you're using a needle, your needle, and then just slip stitching to secure it. That's literally it. We're not joining it to anything. We're just going in and securing these stitches so they don't unravel once we remove our waist yarn. So I'm going to continue with this all the way around until I get back to where I started. So we're going to go all the way around the neck hole including along the other side until we get back to where we just started. Here I am back at the beginning I've just secured my very last stitch and I'm back at that shoulder seam where we began. 
I'm going to go back in through those last stitches of our shoulder seam and do one last slip stitch and then I'm going to fasten this off So now all my stitches should be nice and secure and I can remove my waist yarn from the neck and the shoulders without losing any stitches. I also just want to mention that if you are going to crochet around to secure your neck hole stitches, just keep in mind that you will actually lose a lot of your stretch in your neck. So if you haven't left it big enough, you will probably find that your neck hole is now going to be too small, which mine probably is. Um, so I just wanted to mention that in case you guys are experiencing the same thing. If you are worried about losing the stretch in your neck, I would recommend going in with a needle and securing them that way. Then you won't lose your stretch in your neck. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing how to secure off your neck stitches. I'm probably going to have to go in now with a needle and re-secure them and undo my slip stitches because I didn't factor in the fact that I was going to lose my stretch once I secured them with a crochet hook. Anyway, I'm not going to show you that on camera because that's my mistake and that's really boring. So I will fix that myself, but I just wanted to let you guys know in case you are experiencing the same issue or to prevent you guys from experiencing the same issue. Once you've secured all your stitches, so your neck stitches and your shoulder stitches, we can then go ahead and remove our waist yarn, which is really exciting because let's be honest, it looks crap. So all you need to do is find the end of your waist yarn and depending if it was a cast on or a cast off side will depend on how you remove it, but it should just unpull pretty easily like you can see here. How satisfying is that? If you find that it doesn't unpull easily, let me find one that doesn't. Yep, like this one. If you find you're pulling the end and nothing's happening, it probably means you need to go in and pull out that strand out of the stitches so they then become live stitches which means you'll easily be able to unpull them so you just need to go in and pull your end out from under that top row of stitches otherwise if you were struggling and it was all tangled up which sometimes does happen you could go in with a pair of scissors and just cut your waist yarn off I try to avoid that if I can because I like to reuse the yarn but you know Worst case scenario, if you had to do that, that's absolutely an option as well. So once you have unsecured that top row of stitches, you should then just be able to pull your end and unravel like we just did on the previous side. I've removed my waist yarn you can see that we can actually get a look at what our jumper is going to look like now I just want to mention quickly that please do not remove the waist yarn from the bottom of your jumper these stitches have not been secured yet so please 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 do not remove the waist yarn from the bottom of your jumper yet because we have not secured these stitches if you remove it your whole jumper will start to unravel which is not what we want so anyway, this is what the top of your jumper should be looking like at the moment. Starting to look pretty cute, I must admit. I'm actually really happy with how it's turning out. Disregard my neck hole because this is going to be way too small for my big head to fit through, but I'm going to have to go in and fix that um, myself off camera. Next, we want to start working on the sleeves, but first of all, we need to figure out exactly how long we want to make them. So what I would recommend doing is to try this on. So pop it over your head and just see how far down your arm your panels go, because some of this will probably be sleeve length because it's a drop shoulder style jumper. So just keep that in mind when you are completing your sleeve length. So go and try this on and measure from the edge of your panel to your wrist or wherever you want your sleeve to finish and then that will be the length that we need to make the sleeve. So go ahead, do that now and then come back and we will complete our first sleeve on our knitting machine. Okay, so I have measured my sleeve and I have 
figured out that I need my sleeve to be about 43 centimeters long. So to get started on the sleeve, first of all, you want to take your machine whoops, and switch it over to the tube setting because we are going to be knitting the sleeves in a tube. You are more than welcome to knit it in a panel if you prefer, but I am going to use the tubular setting for the sleeves. Now, obviously with the tubular setting, you do need to use the entire machine. So it will just depend on how big you want your sleeve to be. Keep in mind that if you're thinking, oh, the tubular setting will probably make my sleeve way, way too big, just remember, like I mentioned before, when you take it off the machine, it does condense quite a lot. So you may find that it's actually not as big as what you think it may be just by looking at it on the machine. So just keep that in mind when you are figuring out how you would like to complete your sleeves. If you want to do it in a panel, then you are more than welcome to. You will just have to seam it down the sides to join it up. Anyway, I'm going to get started now. So first of all, we are going to be using the waste yarn method again. So grab your waste yarn and again, we're going to be completing a about 10 rows of waist yarn before we actually start with our sleeve color. So just casting on all the way around and cranking for about 10 rows with your waist yarn. Once you've completed a decent amount of rounds with your waist yarn, we can then attach in our jumper color. So I'm just going to reset my row counter back down to zero. So now that we're using the tubular method, the row counter will work. So if you want to keep track of your rows, so you can do the same amount of rows on both sleeves, that is probably ideal. If your machine doesn't have a row counter, which I know not all of them do, please feel free to use the phone app as well, like we were using the panel method. So leaving a decent tail in the middle so we can use that later on if we want to fasten it off or join our sleeve to the rest of our jumper. Now I'm just going in with my jumper yarn and threading that in under the first peg and then in through our yarn guide. And we can now just start cranking as usual. Again, we're gonna be trying to measure the length of our sleeve while it is on the machine. Again, kinda of tricky, but just do the best you can. As long as it's something close to the measurements you're after, you should be fine. So, so once you've finished your sleeve and you've done a few rounds of waist yarn at the end, we are now going to just remove this from our machine. So pretty much just cranking until it pops off. Now we can move our machine out of the way. And let's see how this first sleeve has turned out. I actually stopped a little bit short of where I wanted my sleeve to finish because I am actually going to go in with some knitting needles and pick up these stitches and knit a cuff on the ends of my sleeves. So that's why I have left mine a little bit short. But let's measure it and see how long it turned out. I did 65 rows. So remember, you don't need to include your waist yarn in your measurements because that is all going to be removed. So I did 65 rows, like I said, and it is about 37 stitches long. So about five or six centimeters shorter than what I wanted my sleeve to be, but that's absolutely fine because again, I'm going to go in with some knitting needles and pick up those stitches and knit a cuff around the wrist. Okay, so now what you want to do is go ahead and complete that exact same process for sleeve number two, making sure you complete the exact same amount of rows so your sleeves are the same length. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll come back here and attach our sleeves. All right, so it's now time for us to attach our sleeves. What you want to do is grab your body section and flip it inside out so you want the wrong side facing you. So that's what I've done here. So the right side is on the inside and then I've got the wrong side facing out. You're then going to take your sleeve and fold it in the way that you've got your long tail kind of right at the edge, if that makes sense. And then you want to keep your tail on the outside of your jumper. And I also just want to mention that you are keeping your sleeve right way out. So we don't have to flip this inside out at all. We're then just going to place it in our body section underneath our panels. And we want to line it up with the shoulder seam so it's sitting nice and flush. And just make sure it's sitting nice and flat on the inside.
just like that. So you should be able to still see your waist yarn and the stitches we want to join on the outside. Now I did do a little bit of trial and error with this and I have come to the conclusion that the best way to seam the sleeves is with a crochet hook. You definitely could just do this with a needle if you like, but I found when I tried it with a needle, it did leave the seam quite gappy and holy. It wasn't a nice, neat seam that you can see here on my panels. So I definitely recommend using a crochet hook if you can. If you don't know how to use a crochet hook, then please, by all means, feel free to use a needle. But I'm going to be using a crochet hook to seam my sleeves. Now, I just want to mention, to avoid the issue we had with the neck and losing the stretch in it being too tight, I have gone up quite a few sizes in my crochet hook. So this is an eight millimeter crochet hook that I'm going to be using to seam the sleeves. And I did find that that kind of fixed the issue with the no stretch and making it too tight. So that's just a tip as well if you do want to finish things off with a crochet hook. Just go up you know to a, like an eight millimeter hook and that kind of fixes the issue with the no stretch. Okay so to get joining with our sleeve I'm just going to turn this this way. My biggest tip for you is to stretch the sleeve as you go. If you were to just lay it there and just seam it as it is, which I did before. As I said, I did a little bit of trial and error to see which was the best way to join the sleeve. I found it was too tight and it bunched up. So it didn't look nice and flat and tidy when I flipped it in the right way. So just keep that in mind as well. You want to kind of stretch your sleeve out as you're joining it. If it helps, you could definitely place like a stitch marker here and kind of pin your sleeve um, even just to the the shoulder just to kind of keep it in place. You're more than welcome to do that. Now I use my Centro 48 pin knitting machine so I know that I need 24 stitches on each side. So you want to make sure that you're joining your sleeve evenly on both sides. So we want to join 24 stitches to this panel here and then we want to join 24 stitches to this panel here. Okay, but you would just have the amount of stitches that you've got. If you're using a Centro 40 or, you know, a 40 pin knitting machine, then obviously it would be 20 on each side, but that's just an example. Okie dokie. So to get started, I'm going to use the long tail that I left. Remember I mentioned that before. If you didn't leave a long tail, don't stress, you can just join in some yarn. Now you kind of want to fold the waist yarn in so those stitches there are exposed. So you can see the stitches that we are wanting to join in to the side of our jumper. So again, before we get started, just stretching this out, making sure this is up nice and flush with our shoulder seam. Kind of lining up where you wanna begin, going into your panel, going into that first stitch there. I just go into the one where my long tail is coming from. and slip stitch to join. Now I'm gonna continue going into every single stitch. Again, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure you're going into every single stitch. I would recommend counting your stitches as you go. Like I said, I know I need 24 on each side, so I'm gonna count my stitches so I know that I've got 24 stitches on this side by the time I get up to the shoulder seam. And then that way you know that you're joining it evenly as well. So. Count your stitches, that way you know you've secured every stitch and you're not gonna lose any of your work. Once you've joined your sleeve all the way around and you're back to pretty much where we started from, I like to go back in through where we started from on the other side of our work, so on the panel that we started on. And then just slip stitch, just to bring the bottom of the sleeve together so we don't have that gap that you would have just seen. And now if you've got enough yarn left, which I think I do, I am now going to 
seam down the side of my jumper. So we've joined our sleeve to our jumper, which is up here. And now with the remainder of my yarn, I'm gonna just seam down the side of the jumper to join the side up. If you don't have enough yarn left over, that's, that's okay. Um, you can always just join in some more yarn and complete this step. But I have just placed a bobby pin at the end here just to hold the two panels together so it will help me just keep on track and make sure I'm joining everything up nice and evenly. Um, you could obviously use a stitch marker for this. I just had a bobby pin there so that's what I used. <laughs> so exactly like we did when we joined our panels together, we're just going to be joining the two sides together. So I'm using a crochet hook. Obviously you could definitely use a needle for this as well. So pretty much just going into the end of each row and slip stitching to join it up. So I'm going to finish down the side here and then I'm going to do the exact same on the other side and then I will come back here and we'll have a look at how it's looking. Once you've joined both sleeves and have seamed down the sides we can now remove our waist yarn from our shoulder seams. So where we've just joined our sleeves, we can remove this waist yarn. Don't remove the waist yarn from the bottom of your sleeve or from the bottom of your jumper just yet because we haven't secured those stitches. But let's go ahead and remove the waist yarn and have a look at what our sleeves look like. There we have it. Our sleeve is attached. As you can see, the crochet hook just gives it such a nice, neat finish. So definitely recommend using a crochet hook if you can, but I am so happy with how it's looking. Now, what we do from here will just purely depend on your skill set and your preferences. So I'm actually going to go in around the neck, around the wrists, and around the bottom of the jumper with knitting needles and knit some ribbing. So if you don't know how to knit with knitting needles, then obviously you don't have to do this step. This is just my preference and this is just what I want to do. You could also go in with a crochet hook and crochet some ribbing or, you know, crochet a few rows just to tidy up the edges. Otherwise, if you don't know how to knit or crochet or you just don't want to, you could, of course, go in with a needle and thread or, you know, a needle and yarn and just secure off those stitches. But for me, I'm gonna go in with my circular knitting needles and knit some ribbing. I'm gonna do this off camera because this is not really a knitting tutorial, it's a knitting machine tutorial. So I'm not gonna go into how to knit ribbing and everything because this video is already way too long. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. But I'm gonna go ahead and knit up some ribbing around the edges and I will come back here and I'll show you guys what it looks like and we will try it on and I'll show you the finished result. I'm sorry but are you seeing this? <laughs> I am so happy with how this has turned out. Like look at it. It honestly looks like something you would buy in a shop. Okay, so the way I finished this off was I went in with four millimeter circular knitting needles around all the edges. So we've got the neckline, the wrist cuffs, and the bottom of the jumper. Um, I just went in and picked up all the stitches with my four millimeter circular knitting needles and knitted a knit to pearl to ribbing around all the edges. I think I did about maybe nine rows around each and I could not be more happy with how this has turned out. Not 
bad, if I do say so myself. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. If you do make one of these, don't forget to tag me in all your social media pictures. I've actually also started up a Facebook group. It's called Talk Yarny To Me. I will leave a screenshot of it here. If you would like to join, please feel free to do so. It is on private, but I will be approving people as they join. So if you would like to join us, please feel free. Um, but in the meantime, take care, stay safe guys. I hope you're looking after yourselves and I will see you in my next video. Bye.